Well, I feel like we should start this week by welcoming a bunch of new listeners. Thanks to the unbelievable amount of publicity that last week's Ronda Rousey podcast got. Fuck, man. They said Steve-O's Wild Ride podcast on TMZ, Yahoo News, ESPN. It was everywhere. So once again, thank you, Rhonda, because last week's podcast was epic. And this one's no joke either. Plus, my co-host Scott Randolph, uh, having some symptoms, feeling sick, he went to the doctor to get a coronavirus test, and the doctor said that it was negative. I think the doctor might have also said he's a pussy, but I'm not sure about that. Anyways, it's me and my co-host Scott Randolph in the van, and doing it for the Jackass fans this week with Wee Man, so let's get to it. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, it's Wee Man. Yeah. So, Hell dude, yeah, dude. What's up? Uh, I'm so excited. Thank you for doing this. Um, Hell yeah. First off, and this is probably a dumb question because I think I know the answer, but what's the official spelling of Wee Man? W E E M A N. No hyphen? No, it, it could go either which way. I lately, like for years now, I've just been doing. Capital W E E then capital M A N with with the space or no space no space wow dude so there is controversy surrounding <laughs> how to spell your name when I was sending the link yesterday I was trying to figure out like I was, I was looking at Steve's like text message threads like how does he spell it okay cool because if I send that is he gonna be pissed but what's pretty cool is just recently Motorhead is doing T-shirts that you can custom order with your name on it but they want to put the umlauts like how Motorhead has. Uh huh. In Motorhead, it's the second O that has the umlauts. So in my name, it says W E E umlaut E M A N. So it's pretty rad. All right. Well, that's a pretty cool way to run with it. <laughs> Motorhead <there> style. <laughs> if there was an over under for how long it would take to start uh, singing the praises of heavy metal. Like, uh, <laughs> which is why I made your thumbnail, uh, the, the logo out of a, a grinded up independent truck. You ride independent, right? I ride Indies. Yeah. Indies are the best. I mean, there's not much, every other truck after that, you know, just they're, right. they want to be Indies. And, and we want, we want to keep the, we want to keep the layman in the loop, the, the trucks on the skateboard and this, and were you ever sponsored by independent trucks? I was never that they, they don't have much of like they have the core team, but the rest of the people on independent are just flow. And they flowed me indies still yeah. to this day. Yeah. So F flow meaning they give you, you don't have yeah, to they pay send you for some trucks. Shit. Yeah. You don't have to pay, pay for trucks. Right. Okay. Yeah. So those are your, your, your true loves skateboarding and heavy metal. It's safe to say. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Good, man. And how do they spell we man on, on the beginning of Jackass? I feel like it's we hyphen man. Yeah, they've done that. They, I think they've done multiple ways. It's uh, weird. So, yeah, dude, I'm so particular about how to spell Stevo. It's like <laughs> I, I, I don't care what anybody calls me. People ask me all the time, dude, is is it Steve or Stevo or Steven? I'm like, I, I'm not particular at all. I don't care what you call me. But if you spell Stevo with a capital S and a lowercase O, it drives oh. me nuts. It drives <laughs> it drives me. You can you can do a, a lowercase S and a lowercase O as long as it's all even, but you can't fucking capitalize one and not the other. Um, and I gotta have the hyphen, dude. I get, oh, you gotta I, have. It? Yeah, I do. I get Stevo. What did the first time I did a tattoo? I accidentally misspelled it Stevo because I was so loaded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so and so now I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep this moving with questions, comments, to get the listeners stoked. And I know I'm ready. I know that uh, there, there's been like many times over throughout the history of Jackass, Wild Boys, you name it, whatever we've been doing, we've thrown out the piece of information that you speak fluent German, but yeah. I, I'm guessing still people don't know that. Is that, I think so. yeah, no, it's still, it, it still comes up. Like I've gone on trips. I was previously sponsored by Monster Energy and they would send me all over the world. And I went <laughs> to Germany one time and the lady who was, uh, with me, like, you know, hosting me or whatever was there. 
And she's like, I've been with you all these years. And we landed in Germany and I just started talking German to the people there. And she's like, I never know you spoke German. I'm like, well, you never asked. <laughs> right. And, and if, if, if I remember correctly, you're uh, from Italy. I was born in Italy. Right. So my, I'm an army brat. My dad was in the army. He was first stationed in Germany where he met my mom. And then he got uh, transferred and stationed in Italy. And that's when I was born. I was conceived in Germany, but born in Italy. Got it. And uh, <laughs> it, it was German your first language? No, it was my second. I didn't even want to learn it when I was a kid, but I did learn it real young. You know, okay. when you're a kid and you're, you're asking your mom, what's this? My mom would tell me in German and I'd be like, no, not that funny language. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so let's feed we let's feed him some lines to say in uh, in German. Say, uh, yeah, what like, was the, some of the shit they were saying I over there? Say, like uh, say say um, pull on my balls. How do you say pull on my balls? <laughs> um, I don't know b balls like nuts. Uh, what about uh, like isn't kitchen coochie? <laughs> no, kitchen is kuche. <laughs> yeah. Kitchen is kuche or kuchen. Kitchen, like you cooking is kuche and kitchen is kuchen. Okay. Say say like a sentence, like give us something. Oh, uh, heute mache ich ein, here, okay. Heute mache ich ein Fleisch in die Küche. All right, that sounded pretty good, but say, but I want to hear like some naughty shit, like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, and, and shit is shizen, right? Shit is shizen. And, 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 and we've always made jokes about it's so crazy because we don't know you speak German like most people, but everybody, we can't say enough about German shizen movies. What's the story with German shizen movies? Because German, like the Germans are like the naughtiest. They're they're like the. They're like the ones that'll do the like shit on my face and stuff like that. That's where it's come from. That's why Scheisse movie came from that. Uh huh. So I say shit on my face in German. Scheisse auf mein Kopf. <laughs> can you say uh, just touch it really quick? <laughs> yeah. Just touch it really quick. Just, like, how no, do you just, say just when touch you... it. <laughs> just touch, touch it. it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uno mas, por favor. <laughs> Just okay. kiss it for a second. I can't. Catch it for, oh, yeah. uh, oh. Well, ki kiss it for a second. It's like kiss it for one second. Okay, <laughs> kiss it is like yeah, yep. Okay, so people know. Uh, people don't. People are generally not aware that you speak German. But boy, does it seem evident that everybody fucking knows that you are living out of a van. Oh like, yeah, you know this is gonna be good. But first, I've got to tell you about my balls and spill the beans on a very big secret. So, in this quarantine, nobody's going to see their barber. Everybody's growing out big-ass afros, myself included. But there is no reason why anybody should have a pubic afro, let alone shaggy balls. So I'm very grateful that this show this week is sponsored by Manscaped, who has us covered to make sure that our balls are nice and groomed without getting cut. Now, what's the big secret? The secret is that when the quarantine's over and people can congregate again, I'm going to be having a massive meetup where I want every dude that can get to Los Angeles to bring their manscaped lawnmower 3.0 grooming tool to this meetup and we are gonna harvest the biggest pile of everybody's pubic hair that we possibly can butt hair included so that's the secret you don't need to know what it's for or when it's happening but what you need to do right now is go to manscaped.com, use the promo code STEVO to get your grooming tool as well as all kinds of other products that Manscaped makes to keep dudes on top of their game. And again, use the promo code STEVO at manscaped.com for 20% off your order and free shipping. And make sure you hang on to that grooming tool for the mass roundup and harvest of pubic hair. Again, go to manscaped.com, use the promo code STEVO for 20% off your order and free shipping. Now, back to Wee Man. 
check this out, dude. Like, I think you told me ahead of time that you were going to do a YouTube video with a guy who's got, like, a, an RV channel or, or, like, a camper van YouTube channel. And that channel, I don't know what it is now, it had 15,000 subscribers. <laughs> yeah. And then you do this video... <laughs> where you gave a tour of the van that you were living in, legitimately living in it. And it's like, it, it's almost 5 million views. Yes. And I've had people come up to me and be like, dude, we man's living in a van. And then, cause, especially because I had a van. So it's just like, oh, um, how long were you living in the van? I lived in it for one year. I actually got two during the time period that I lived in it. So the first one, when I went to go get one, when I realized I wanted to live in a van, uh, they're like, well, it was back in uh, September of 2018. And they're like, well, we can't build you one and have it done until July of next year. And I'm like, dude, I just <laughs> sold my house and I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> and, so, and I was living in a hotel for like two months. And so they're like, well, look on our website and see if someone's selling one used. And this was a Thursday afternoon and I look on their website. I'm like, oh, that one's pretty rad. Let me call the dude. So I called the dude and I go, hey, have you had any bites on your van? He's going, well, go one guy, but he has not like come back. And I'm like, well, I'm going to be there Monday. He's in Arkansas. I go, I'm going to fly in Monday. I'm going to take you to lunch and I want to see your van in person. He goes, all right, sounds good. And I'm like, well, don't sell it because I'm interested. And he goes, okay, sounds good. And he had no clue who I was. <laughs> That's how to get a shitty deal 101. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? That's, that's how to get a shitty deal 101. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Don't sell it. I'm interested. You know, like, not like. Oh, wanna, yeah, 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 yeah. You want to have like a poker face. He added like, on oh, five grand of the price just off that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, but then he had like a bro boner once I got there, and he realized who I was. Right, and, and then and then, <laughs> then he tacked on another tax. <laughs> <laughs> the boner tax, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think you said something really interesting that you know you said that uh, you know, I sold my house and now I'm kind of stuck. Yeah. Um, I mean that's like uh, you. It, it sounded to me like you were like, dude, I sold my house. I'm moving to Canada. I'm going to live on a farm. That's and what then, was first going to happen. And, and then the plan fell through after yes. you sold the house. Yes, exactly so, what happened. And so you're like, okay, so I'm not moving to Canada anymore. I changed my mind and I already sold my house. So yep. now is that why you decided that you wanted to live in a van? Yeah, because in 2018, the, the, the real estate market was kind of high. And I knew I didn't want to buy in LA again. And I wanted to do something bigger. So I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? So I just started researching vans and I got stoked on the Mercedes Sprinter one. So I started checking them out, checking them out. And I actually called my buddy who I knew wrapped them and did different things. And I'm like, what do you know about these? I need more info. And when I texted him, he actually sent me a photo. He was driving his. He's like, come by in the morning. I'll tell you all about them. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I did my whole research before I went and got one. Now, when you were living in the van for that whole year, like where would you typically most often sleep? Like where would you, where would you park it? Mainly like campsites that like RVs would camp at. Uh huh. Yeah, I was kind of sketched. I did a couple like I did quite a few times like they would say Walmart parking lots. Sure. Yeah, and then like I did Flying J gas stations because uh -huh. in the morning. <laughs> You can go in and take a full shower and all that and yeah. you know, get whatever you need. So I did those a few times. And then after a while, I just, I kind of got tired of wondering where I was. I had a toilet in my van. Uh-huh. And I just hated taking a shit in it and then having to clean it out, you know? It's so funny. <clears throat> I love the luxury of having that, but I hated yeah. the cleaning part of it. We've with with this one, we've got a toilet right here. Uh, we piss in it, but we don't shit in it. Yeah, it's a compromise. Yeah, no, no, I I would do that all the time. Like I didn't care about that. Yeah. But every morning, you know, you wake up every morning, you got to drop a deuce. I know, I know you do. You're you're the most regular guy I know. <laughs> like, uh, and you like you, you and you drink your coffee, and then that makes you shit every time, every morning. That that's uh -huh. not like you. You don't do that. No. I do that every morning. 
Uh, well, I don't know you as well as I know him. <laughs> hey, do you have any? Did you ever have any crazy experiences like sleeping over at night? Some of these places in, the, in like the middle of America, like people knocking on your door, oh. fucking. It was all pretty mellow. He was pretty stealth. Yeah, I was pretty it, stealth about it. He had like a plain black. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't like I didn't have my I didn't have the yeah dude logo on the side. <laughs> Up. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you didn't Drones have your face on it. In and fucking... <laughs> that's so. That's so great. So uh, I was pretty stealth. I was. Now, uh, did you get the app on your phone called I Overlander, which is like GPS, and it and and it just marks spots where you can get away with uh, with sleeping in your car overnight? No, never got that. Everybody kept telling me to get it, and then people kept. T- I heard all kinds of apps and I was just like, most of the time I would just say, fuck it and just go somewhere. And I'd yeah. kind of like figure out spots, but it was tough every morning trying to find a place. Like I'd be like, okay, I go to a coffee shop, get a coffee and, you know, take a shit there. And then I'd kind of go from there, you know, right. then I'd like figure out my day. I mean, dude, like as a guy who's had a van, first I had the little camper van, then I got this, you know, big motor home, which of course, for the people listening, we're in it right now. This is what, what I got. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Uh, <laughs> well, that was a pretty was good my, reveal. Here, put, put the art back up. How do you even put it up? <laughs> do, 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 and stop knocking it down, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in any case, um, I, ha- I had the camper van, and then I got this big motor home for like podcasting and stuff. Dude, it is, it's a gnarly move to actually commit to living in the van. Yeah, I, I would never, I don't think, want to do that. I, it, you know what it did? It humbled me. I totally got humbled from it, knowing that I could still survive with a minimal amount of things and still get to do what I wanted to do. Like, for the first while, I seriously was traveling and hitting different skate parks, <coughs> and I was loving that part of it. The only part I didn't like was... I thought I I thought I could handle like every day I'm waking up, film it, do this, da da da. It gets old trying to do that when you're like, no, I just want to show up and I just want to skate. So yeah. that was where but it is very living in it is very humbling. Because yeah. you don't know what's right outside of you. And you know, you never know, you know. I one of the best experiences I had was I went to a campground in Sedona, Arizona up in the hills. And so I came from like sunny Southern California, went up and it was raining that night and they said it was going to snow. And so I had a little fire. I was looking up at the mountains. I had a Creek by me. And the next morning I woke up and I opened the side door and it's just snowing. And I'm like, this is the best life. I'm just sitting here having my cup of coffee, <laughs> taking my shit, taking a shit, in the <laughs> creek. <laughs> taking a shit somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's killer. Do, do uh, you miss it? Well, he's got a van now, so you can I go. I still have it, and my lady and I go all the time. We'll leave on little van excursions just just for fun. She loves it too. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I I won't get rid of this van. I will yeah. always keep this van. Yeah, just because I like getting away. Right now, <clears throat> there we are under the subject of ladies, and congratulations for getting engaged. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're, I'm stoked. We're both engaged. I've been engaged for over two years now. I was at your engagement. <laughs> yeah, you were. And you got engaged. You, you were there when I did. I love that, man. So <laughs> is it true that, like, you know she's the one when you got it? Like, uh, how'd, you, how'd you know she was the one? So I've been, like, I would meet different girls, different things and all that. And a lot of dudes, like, older dudes or dudes have been, they're like, you'll know when she's the one. I'm like, you know, I've met so many girls. I've never had, like, she's the one. So her and I have dated before. We've met multiple times. This last time when we got together, the first night we hung out, I knew it. There was just this thing. And I'm like, we're supposed to be together. You're the one. I know it. And we have been ever since we got back together. And what's funny is I proposed to her one week before everybody got put on like stay home lockdown. I proposed to her March 1st. And then like March 12th, everybody was on lockdown. So we've been home every day that's like the, dude, dude, yeah that's I a mean, big test it is dude that's right that with all this coronavirus thing that's what i've heard like uh i mean of course there's a lot of things about it but couples divorce rates are spiking 
I heard divorce rates have spiked. Different, like all kinds of things have happened. It does test. It does test the relationship. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm enjoying the shit out of your barbecue videos every night. <laughs> yeah. What's crazy is right then too. I just went by my buddy's house. And I said, "Let's go to this barbecue place." He goes, "Dude, this is the headquarters." So I went there, and the dudes were pretty stoked. And I saw this barbecue I want. I'm like, well, I want this small one. I got a little small patty. They're like, all right, we'll order it for you. And once again, coronavirus had a kind of a, a thing on it where the shipment was a little late. But as soon as it went in, I jammed over there, got it. And I said, you know, and as soon as I got it, I go, you know what? What else do I have to do? But I can cook on this thing every night. So I just started cooking and making different things and learning different techniques. And I was making fun videos just for like, dude, watch me. <laughs> Flames were blazing and stuff, just cooking on. People are like, "Dude, we love it! It's so much! It's like the best!" You know, it's 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 an enlightening thing during these times. Yeah. So, and everybody who isn't really uh, aware of this, you're cooking on Instagram every night on your every story, night. and everybody needs to follow you on Instagram. It's hell yeah! I am We Man. Yep. On Instagram, you'll know. That's a blue check mark. That's right. <laughs> it seem, it seems like there's been uh, somewhat less skating uh, uh, that you've been posting on Instagram. Is it safe to say that because you're with your chick, um, that 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 that's making you skate a little less? No, not at all. For first off, was right before <laughs> we started filming, I got injured really bad. Like, oh I, yeah, that's right. I, I pulled my calf super bad, and then. I got back into it and I started skating with my buddies again. And one week before we started filming, I bashed my knee pretty hard. And I was like, oh, dude, I can't. I, I'm going to just cruise right now while we're filming. But then with this, I was going to just start cruising around and skate spots. There's all kinds of skate spots my, by my house. But it was raining and different things. So right. I just started doing other things in the meantime. So it wasn't my lady. It hasn't right. been anything but my own time and my own I wanted to make sure I was in the healthiest point for us to film. Good. I didn't want to show up to set with a broken leg and go, yeah, Jeff, I'm here. You know? Right. He would have been bummed. I get it. Now, uh, I just think it's so killer that you've skated so consistently, so passionately for so long. And I got to say, too, that, you know, you're aging fantastically well. Thank like you. Yes. Yeah. You know the jackass guys. We have we've all kept our hair. Like, what yeah. are the odds? What are the odds that like the you know? Yeah. All, like nobody's gone bald. Yeah. Right. Is. Yeah. See, if if we were if we were one of these podcasts where they're bringing it up, I would say like bring up uh, for sure the percentage of but, men who go bald. But I really I I really like Knoxville's post the other day where he's showing his gray. I was like, dude, he looks better. He looks great. Because it's is now it's it's how he should look right now. They say, what, you know, when you dye your hair or do everything, it's not where you're at with your body. Your body's color tones change with where you're at in life. So he is like, he's, he's the sexiest he'll be right now. For sure. I mean. <clears throat> right, do you have a lot of grays? I got like a couple that just go through here. I don't know. But that's yeah. like, this is all This is all natural. It's so funny when we used to say "oh, oh natural," <laughs> that meant humping a chick with no rubber. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Skinny I did dipping. <laughs> Skin, skinny dipping. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to get into that, but I. But I feel like I can ask those later because I'm. I'm curious because. Well, yeah, I think we can. We can get a little. Uh, don't don't try this at home. Bunch of times I went on tour for, for for years. For years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we've we've had a lot of history, man. It's uh, it's yeah. really incredible. And I think that about Jackass, what's uh particularly cool and, and and makes me grateful, is that you look at all these rock bands that have been around forever, and they just hate each other. You know, like like they hate each other, but they keep touring and stuff. And like, legitimately. I think that the, the the chemistry and the magic between us with Jackass is like the same as it ever was. And, yeah, and that's it totally is. And I think cool. it's actually grown better throughout the years. Uh huh. It, the chemistry has matured and gotten even better. 
Right. And it's crazy, too, because the, the, the movies for Jackass were so essentially few and far between. You know, like yes. we did. Yep. The, there was four years off in between each of the first three. And yeah. Then, now um, it's ten. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it's crazy how, like, everybody kind of went different ways. Some, you know, some of the guys didn't do anything. And, like, what's so impressive about you is that you got, like, fully into like being an entrepreneur yeah. like uh it's 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 crazy like um how much did jackass 3d with the the wee man's chronic tacos logo that they included in the film how much did that launch your your restaurant enterprise it launched it huge <laughs> it was a big success i hear about it still to this day because films forever so somebody watching it last night will see the Wee Man, you know, Ryan Dunn's jump sponsored by Wee Man's Chronic Tacos. And you didn't even have to do the jump. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. And, <laughs> and, uh, and so, so you had already gotten in to that deal, right? And, I was and, already in. I'd already been in two years deep once the movie hit. And, and it was um, just one restaurant that had your name My on. name on, yep. Was that Newport? No, that was uh, Redondo Beach. And and it we did it we did it just for fun. <laughs> and Knoxville would drive by it all the time when he used to go to Naomi's house. So uh -huh. he when he first saw the sign go up, he sent me a picture and he goes, "What the hell's going on?" And I'm like, "Yeah, just doing what I do, bud." <laughs> and, and was that the first Chronic Tacos? No, no, no. There was 28 at that time. Oh shit. Okay. So when so when you Here's here's what happened. So in 2008, uh, the founder came to me and asked, uh, "Hey, do you want to join Chronic Tacos? We're we're kind of either in the middle of gonna sell the brand or maybe revamp it." And he goes, "I've seen you. You do some cool things. I think you could be a cool face for it." And I said, "Well, let's meet and you know discuss." So we met, and then we had a great time. We hit it off. He, he's such a rad dude. His name's Randy. And we just, he goes, dude, let's, the one you open, let's call it Wee Man's Chronic Tacos. I'm like, all right. I wasn't even involved in making that decision. I just wanted to be part of the brand. And we did that. And then it kind of, it spiraled from there. Right. What I wasn't clear on was what, why you had your name on one restaurant, but you actually have like some kind of uh, involvement in owning all of them, right? You've got like a share of it. Yep, I'm 10% uh, of the whole thing. Oh, shit. He gave us a number. That's pretty good. <laughs> Dude, and now there's 50 restaurants. No, there's 62. We're oh, shit. They did it added like 12 in the last few months. <laughs> are you guys killing it right now? Or is, are you guys taking a huge hit with the Rona? Are you guys worried about it? We're, we're taking a huge hit with the Rona. We are, I can admit that. We're taking a hit with this. But, it, you know, we're doing like everybody else's curbside pickup and deliveries. Right. So, you know I how you guys still... would do a lot better? It would be doing some hot sauce for your butthole inside of each store. <laughs> 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 I mean, if you can make some decisions, let's, let's fucking talk about it. Um, yeah, I mean, how many different styles of your own hot sauce do you have? We have uh, two or three different styles. I mean, you could add he hot could. sauce for your bubble. Yes, yes, ten percent. And it's it's so funny too that um, I think it was Preston. He like when when your restaurant business really took off, he said, "Yeah, we got a new name for Wee Man. Uh, he's Rich Little." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's yeah. great, man. It's great. Congrats on that too, man. Thank uh, you. To, to just set to just set yourself up. I feel like it's shocking. Nobody would ever believe like that actually like the jackass guys have like reasonably high IQs, you know, for the most part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the but most yeah, part. But yeah, yeah, you've always you've always made pretty uh pretty good decisions, I think, like with, with money, with business, you know, like and um you've Timing always been in the housing market. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, dude. Oh my god, dude, with the house, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, yeah, that, that, just... <laughs> you should be your financial advisor, dude. <laughs> I know, dude. I, I've been awful. I mean, no, what's funny is I've actually been reading finance books lately, too. I believe and, it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I got some pretty good advice and big changes that once once this whole thing kind of goes through, there's going to be some big changes to happen. And I want to pass the word on to it, especially like my bros. Good. Good, yes. man. Well, I, I trust you. Um, so. Another thing is that uh, you, you said you're an army brat. And yeah. um, so you've got a lot of love for the military because I always hear about how you travel all over to do these uh, what is it, um, USO? USO? Yeah. USO appearances. Yeah. How many how many times have you flown like uh, overseas to do USO stuff? I I can't even count anymore. I I know it's been over ten or fifteen. We've done it for we did it for seven years straight, and then I've always always for free. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've gone uh, around the world clockwise on two different trips in one week in eight days. We'd start in L.A., fly to New York. New York to then like Italy, Italy then to like Germany, Germany to like Afghanistan. Then like in we we'd go clockwise in eight days and just visit different troops out in different areas. Are you flying like a military plane? Yeah, we actually we've flown a couple of times on uh, Air Force Two, the vice president's plane. Jesus. So we've flown on that twice, <laughs> and then we'll fly on <laughs> yeah. Then we've flown on C seventeens. The big ones that carry tanks and stuff and you know, all kinds of different aircraft. What's the vice president's plane like? Oh, that thing is tits. Just think of a private jet, but 747 size. Yeah. I mean, oh. if, it's Air, if it's Air Force Two, you would imagine it's probably the same fucking thing as Air Force One, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So how many of these, uh, how many of these USO trips did you go into just full on war zones? Uh, I've been in uh, three, I believe. I went, to, I went to Afghanistan and Iraq during the Iraq Afghanistan wars. We hey, landed hey, in, we landed in <laughs> Afghanistan, and they told us if we tell you hit the deck, hit the deck. And we're like, all right, and we're just <laughs> listening. 30, 30 minutes in, like hit the deck. Oh my god! Oh, shit. Yeah. So we didn't even spend the night there. We only stayed for like two hours. And when we took off, back off, we had two F-18s flying with us, ready to shoot anybody down like if stuff happened. Holy fuck. So crazy. We would go with a four-star general wh- who, would, who would take us on these trips. Man. So, and then the sc- scariest thing ever that I've ever been in, we were in Afghanistan, and we were going to ha- fly to Qatar. And we, we were in the rain. It was morning rain. We were getting in the helicopter in the rain. And we took off four military helicopters take off. We're 10 minutes into the flight and we look out the window and we see shoo, shoo. <laughs> and we're like, oh, fuck, we just <laughs> got shot at. And the pilot gets on, uh, yeah, we're going to have to turn around due to weather. <laughs> <laughs> we're turning around because we just got shot at. <laughs> Due to weather, yeah, it's raining missiles. <laughs> Holy fuck, that's gnarly, dude. Yeah, no, it was one of the scariest things I've been like to be actually shot at. You're like, okay, this is gnarly. All right, so so if we're if if we're uh, talking about scary things, like um, I mean, I hate to be ask a, a cliche, boring question, but I think if it's me asking you, it's kind of a dope question, like okay. you know, a scary jackass moment, like uh, some of the gnarlier. I don't know, because I've been asked that question a whole bunch of times, and I don't know what the scariest thing <laughs> is. Because, right. Because we've been around with Wild Boys and stuff, too. We've been at around Anaconda Snakes on us. You and I have laid oh, yeah. with tigers. We've I've jumped off bridges with tied to Preston, you know. So <clears throat> the, there, there's this thing where it's. Right. I think I'm more of an adrenaline junkie than a fear junkie. All right. Because you're just desensitized to well, it. Well, here's the here's the thing, and I, and I should say that I'm embarrassed for asking that question in the first place because I get the same shit so much all the time too, and I always kind of stick with the same answer that when it comes to scary situations, like you know, you max out at a certain you know, it's not one's not scarier than another because once you're scared to a certain point, yeah, you can't you can't get more scared and like yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. There's so many different examples of times where we maxed out 
that you know it's apples and oranges and and I, it, yeah know? yeah i think for me like something that I, I would never do out of like anything that you guys have done would be when manny grabbed the tail of the fucking lion dude right that's heavy metal right even though even though it was a, a captive lion you know, I don't mind. It's don't, like going to Tiger Land. I don't know, though. The... I can't, I don't think, it, it's kind of hard to fight the, the, the hot, the danger of, okay, it's a captive lion. Sure. Right? So, because you can, you'll see. Siegfried and Roy. Yeah. Go into cages and go, well, you know, we're cool because they're captive and do die, you know, like. Right. I'm the Tiger King. Yeah, or the Tiger King. Yeah, Any, Joe Exotic shit. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Joe, the Joe Exotic shit. Fucking bitch lost an arm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the best part of it was when Joe then throws on a paramedic jacket and goes, all right, I got this. Yeah, where did that come from, dude? Like, what where the... was that jacket? Like, where was it sitting that he's like, oh, get the paramedic jacket right now? Right, and Siegfried and Roy, they, they, they did the Las Vegas thing with the Tigers. Yeah. And I don't know if it's Siegfried or Roy, but one of them is a straight up fucking vegetable because the tiger just fucking chomped, yeah. on, chomped his head like a fucking Cheeto. And, yeah. uh, and dude, when, when we were filming with the same <clears throat> captive lions in California doing this Nintendo commercial and uh, where I'm up in the tree, I, like I'm gonna make a video of times we to. could have died. For sure. Like uh, times we just straight up could have died, and that's like for sure one of them. But I was making fun of Siegfried and Roy in the tree, and then the lion just <laughs> comes up. <you> know? <laughs> he was licking you. He was licking you. Like he was like, "Oh, this is a good piece of meat." And after this third, oh lick, that's when I'm gonna bite. W were you there? No, but I've seen the footage. Yeah. Dude, I wasn't there, but I've seen the. And he and he kept reading. Like, I was like, bro, like, what was going through your mind? Um, I, I mean, I, I, I stopped get delivering my lines and I started saying, good kitty. Good kitty. Good kitty. It's a fucking 300 pound African lion. <laughs> yeah, captivity doesn't do a whole lot. No, there, no. You know? and then what, other times have you, what other times have you guys almost died if you could think about? Uh, we I, didn't I, die, but one of the fun ones was when we were on the back of the elephant, me, Chris, and Steve O. And the elephant just took off. <laughs> Remember, and we're all just holding each other, like, don't let go, don't let go, yeah. just stay on, just stay on. In Kenya. I mean, it wasn't that bad, but it's a fun one. That's it. There should be two versions of, uh, of the video. Times I almost died while working, like for work, and then times we almost died, like, you know, like on our, on our, on our personal time. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, I'm man. trying to think in, like... Oh, I mean, in South Africa, that was pretty crazy. But like, I mean, any other like Fiji it, swimming with sharks wasn't that bad. Yeah, I don't know why like bull sharks in different parts of the world aren't as crazy. But uh, but but enough of all that. Now, uh, on the um, it, 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 before we start recording, I, I I brought this up like with the 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 um political correctness, the this whole culture of uh, of being really sensitive and really careful, and. Uh, like, it, it always felt weird to me, like, in Jackass, and I'm pretty sure that it was included in, like, the final cuts of movies, episodes, right, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, where they're throwing around the word midget. And, like... Here's, here's a funny one. It's, the word has never bothered me, because I've gone back to the day, like, I think people have always asked me, have you been <laughs> bullied or whatever or anything when you were younger? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, if you ask Preston, Preston will tell you I'm the biggest bully. So uh -huh. <laughs> words, words have never hurt me like that. I'll even say midget. But what's a funny thing to me was in Jackass 3, when we did the big hand, for me to bring Bam towards me, he was walking in the office and he had his <laughs> breakfast burrito and he was walking in and I was doing the, uh, the foosball. I said to him in his voice to kind of get his attention, like, <laughs> fucker, I'm like, hey, what's up midget and he goes oh what's up you know so i yeah. said it to bam and that was in the cut nope they blurred it they beeped it okay I'm like what are you doing i'm like that's how i that's how i lured bam right. into the hand and they're like no no paramount said no can't use the midget word whatever right and i'm like i'm the one saying it you know what i mean right you know, realistically, I, I think that I, I, I could argue and, and I really do believe that what's more offensive is the actual politically correct term, little person. 
because I think that that is inherently belittling, you know, to exactly. say like, to say like no, little person, it. you know, I've always said, I don't give a fuck how tall Wee Man is. There's nothing little about, he's fucking epic, you know, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I get it on that. But here's, here's another <laughs> way that I took it too, and that I think the general population sees it. I did Kevin and Bean one time too, and like, hey, uh, are you cool with midget or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, what, what? I'm like, you're a midget, dude, whatever, you know? <laughs> so they, had, they had two little people on and they got very offended by that word that Kevin and Bean just kept saying it to get under their skin. And the same, you know, it's like, well, if you let it, if you let it get to you, it's going to get to you. If you don't let it get to you, just go. Dude, when I was doing cocaine with Mike Tyson locked up in a bathroom for like hours on end, he said one of the most insightful things ever. He said, the definition of the N-word is anybody who uses the N-word. <laughs> yeah. Pretty funny. For a coked up Mike Tyson, dude, that was pretty deep. <laughs> yeah. the, one of the best things I've loved about Tyson and I mean everything. <laughs> everything, of course. But one of the best thing is that he he comes out real low and then went real high. So he came out with just a towel on, you know, a one note as his as his music, didn't have the stool, and then he would just knock fools out. Yeah. And and Jerry said he hates when comedians they're they're just comedians would come out and do like a fireworks show you know, flying tigers and stuff. And then the comedian comes out. He's like, right. no, you got to come in low and then go high. Right. Yeah, I was always with my tour my, for stand-up. I didn't want to come out to like some like big epic entrance song because then I'm going to stand there and talk. I would want it to be like kind of goofy. Christopher Cross. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher. Oh, dude, that's, <laughs> that's one of my favorite uh, jackass things where... Uh, they, I forget what it was for, but they were going to hit you, I think, with a fish. And it's really hard to stand there and get it was for the super slow mo camera. Yeah, it's, we did it for the intro. Right. It's is that what that was your intro shot? OK, for the for the opening scene. And like and, and especially at like fifteen hundred frames per second, like you can catch any little movement. And, yeah. and you're, you got to sit there and get hit with a fucking fish in the face, like a big, heavy fish. Like, it's really hard to know you're going to get hit and not, not flinch. like flinch at all. And yeah. so, so they're trying to get the shot and, 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 you know, your instincts, like, you know, you're like kind of anticipating it. It and took four like, tries. I know, but they, four tries. They said, they said, they said, uh, stop moving, man. Just, just chill. And, and, and you're like, put on some music. And they put on like some like Iron Maiden or some Black Sabbath. And you're like, you know, it wasn't helping at all. And I was like, hold on, I got this. And, and I go running and I and get my little Nissan verse and I pull it into the fucking hangar. And I open up the doors and I play Christopher Cross. Sailing <laughs> takes me away. To it. And all of a sudden you just relax and like didn't move at all. Whap! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad, I, I thank you for that because Jeff was getting pissed. He's like, yeah. hey man, just stand there. <laughs> like, yeah. Ryan, dude. Right. So you, see, you know, you see this, like you, right here is where you get the glitch and that's where you move. Right. It's like when you were, when you were with us in Thailand filming Wild Boys and uh, someone said, I think it was probably you, you said, hey, you know where we are? And and I'm like I don't know. And you go Bangkok and fucking and I punch him. <laughs> and it was like the greatest nut shot. But somehow like they didn't get it right on camera. I and know. So, that, so then so then it was like oh we got to reshoot it. But now all of a sudden we know that we're gonna get hit in the nuts. And it doesn't fucking work that way, dude. Yeah, it doesn't. Did, so, did you guys so ever hard. get like fucking epic footage that you never got on camera? And it's just like, dude, if I only fucking had that on camera, is there any like thing that you, I think there's a, yeah, I have a lot of skate stuff like that where we never had the cameras around or rolled. And I'm like, damn, yeah, my worst injury ever. Oh uh, yeah. Well, what, yeah, what I, mean, was like, like, I, I felt like I broke my skull falling off of a, uh, th throwing myself up a balcony at a kick. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. That's not on camera. That's a pisser. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Whatever. Um, so dude, like uh have you 
Here's something where people, as people ask me, like, what stunt, you get this question so much, what stunt did you regret? And I have an answer, the same answer every time is like, the, my, my honest regret is that I didn't do more. That's probably mine too, because there wasn't really any that I didn't do. And then the one I've also answered is, do you remember when, uh, I think it was in Florida, I forget who it was, had the little baby alligator and it bit knocks on the nipple? They came to me first, and I was like, uh-uh. I, I said no. <laughs> and then Knox gets in. He has this full poster now of this right. alligator. That, and I'm like, fuck. That, I could have been a poster. Right. It, it would have been It would have been pretty killer if it was you. For sure. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing, dude. That's the regret. The regret is that, fuck, man, that there were, like, so many times where, like, I didn't step up or I did, but I half-assed it. And if I just yes. would have gone all out and dug a little deeper and got the fucking footage, I would have been more stoked. So, you know, I, I like, I, and then I, I just get so stoked to not fucking give up because I'm like, that. Like that's why I keep going, man. That's why me I Me too. Keep. So <laughs> it's pushed me more now. Right. Because of those times that I've had regrets now. I think about them when I'm doing other things now. Right. And without, without being too particular about like what, what we're up to, I uh, think that, it, that I'll just say in general that I really believe even though we're way fucking older, that this thing we're talking about where it's like, dude, no, this is like last call. It's last yeah. call to fucking be gnarlier than ever. And the yeah. bar is higher and we've got to fucking push harder and go bigger and just be gnarlier. I agree with you 100%. I think that, I, I know, like, sure, like a lot of people might think, who wants to see a bunch of fucking middle-aged fucking like... No, dude. You know, like, and it's It's like, on. I think it's on, dude. I think, dude, I actually, you know what? I know it's on. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. it, it done started. So this, uh, and who the fuck knows what's going to happen with this coronavirus shit, dude. It's so heavy. It is. I mean, what are you hearing? Are, are you you thinking we get back into the economy, what, in the summer or later or earlier? I mean. I'm hearing, I, I've heard certain things that's like end of May, then I'm hearing into June, July. And it's, well, it's, there's just so many different things. The economy, you can't trust. And that's why I've been reading finance books lately. But if you look, if you watch the stock market every day, <coughs> it's like it's green one day or two, yeah. and then it's red straight down. And then it's green. It's, it's seriously like this. And that's like, okay, that, that is just, that's the worst. Like you can't follow that and think. It's not like, oh, it's slowly going up and does a little dip and then slowly. No, it is this all day long it's what you call a dead cat bounce <laughs> right you know where like <laughs> some shit goes That's down and like the, the banks like the fucking you know the power people they're like let's in inject a bunch of money in to give people confidence in the market and they put it in and sure it comes up but then the real fucking slam comes i watched a documentary on the stock market crash of 1929 and it's like yeah. fucking looks like exactly what's going on now yeah, Dude, yeah, it's so heavy. Like uh, this morning, and and I know, like I look like the analytics on on the fucking podcast, <laughs> and uh, and I noticed that with when I was talking to Ronda Rousey, and I said something about I think that this could be like a, a not only like a Great Depression but a greater depression. I think that was the point where like a lot of people were like fuck that I'm out. Shut up! You just saw the drop. So yeah, I think the audience dropped the fuck off, and and like I think we're deep enough in it now that like who cares but you know <laughs> i was uh on a podcast no I, know, I was on a radio station this morning i just like have buddies at this uh radio station in st louis and they're like so you know what's up like you're gonna be on tour and i was like dude tour like society society as we know it is like on the like is, is maybe never gonna be the same because no. as far as touring goes there's two components like it's the question of after this coronavirus deal, how soon are people going to be comfortable to be packed into a room in large numbers in small spaces? And yep. like, that's a variable. And even if hypothetically everybody's totally cool with it, like after all of this uh, economic shutdown, like how soon can you expect people to have expendable income to go out for like a a an expensive night uh, at the, the theater? The, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's so like an extra thing. First, they got to get back and make sure. Whoa, this 
This is the first spam risk call I've got this whole, <laughs> this whole coronavirus. No, this whole coronavirus. Did you ever notice? What is that? Spam risk calls went down. That was a spam risk call. Uh, how about that? Yeah. All right. I haven't received one in a long time, but that was the first one. during. They heard us talking about the fucking economy crashing. <laughs> dude. They... We're back at work. <laughs> right. No, and, I mean, and... dude, movie theaters are shutting down. I think AMC is going bankrupt. Like, dude. who's going to want to go to the movies? It's going to be, dude, it's, it's fucking heavy, dude. That whole plan that you had to move to Canada, you might want to fire it back up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's up there, too. It's up there also. Like, it's all over. Sure. And Canada's particularly fucked because the price of oil is down to, like, 20 bucks a barrel or something. It's, like, yeah. insane. Like, yeah. and Canada's whole economy is that. But I don't know that yeah. people are too interested. All right, wait, 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 what questions do you got? I just had, I, I, you know, I was just thinking about it, and I was, you know, I knew that you came from Italy and Germany over to the South Bay, and then you started working as a subscription guy. Another spam call. Is that what that... That was a real call. That's uh, weird. Okay. And, and just, to like, you started selling subscriptions over at Big Brother. Yeah. That's that's what you and then did you guys know each other? And just so people know, Big Brother is the skateboard magazine which served as the the genesis for Jackass. So what happened was I was already like in Big Brother. I was already in the magazine. Rick uh, Kosick already done a photo shoot. I've already did an interview with Sean Cliver and been in the magazine. But when I first moved out of my house and the first place I lived, I lived with Kosick. Ah, oh, okay. Kosick was like, well, you got to get a job. You just can't just skate. <laughs> and so then I went and worked at Big Brother. So What does a subscription guy do? You go and get like people to subscribe? I, no, no, no. I get all the stacks of magazines, and I'm just shoving them in envelopes and putting oh. the people's addresses that were subscribed to them oh. and then mailing them off. Dude, so, so like – now, Big Brother Magazine started as this, like, crazy escape thing. And then, like, the guy who started it sold it to Larry Flint. So, at Larry Flint being, like, the, the founder of Hustler Magazine, like, the world's most... But that's where when Jackass started, too. Well, sort of. The, my, my, the, first, the, the first issue of Big Brother Magazine, which I was in, was the first issue which was published by Larry Flint. And that came out when I was in Clown College in 97. So that was the one I was on the cover of because they changed it and they sent, when it went to Larry Flint and Larry Flint got it, they <clears throat> sent off the Big Brother subscriptions to some dude who had uh, who, oh, porn mag. Right. That's what I was going to say. It was Taboo, Taboo Magazine, which was like, yeah, Taboo Magazine. Uh, Taboo Magazine was. Um, like the the most risque, like the most edgy, like like the taboo means like not okay. Dude, <laughs> you know? dude my, my mom. So everybody who subscribed to Big Brother got a copy of Taboo magazine, which is just like fucked up porn. And the and the taboo and, guy and got skateboard magazines. Yes. That's so funny. then it made it to Jay Leno, and that issue was the one I had my pro spotlight in, and I was on the cover doing the Oompa Loompa skating that we filmed for to do Jackass. Oh shit, mm. dude! I was gonna say, was it? But were you the one stuffing taboos in the? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, I was gonna say, like, my brother was working at Big Brother, and he'd bring home all the taboos and keep them in my room. Yeah, his and brother he... was Steve the intern. Yeah, uh, okay. the, one, the one who fought Chuck Liddell. And and so so my mom walked into my room, and I was like fourteen or fifteen, and there's just stacks of taboo, and she was like, "What the fuck are you doing, dude?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a sex addict. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> you gotta let it out sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I know, oh, dude. dude. So, so am I. <laughs> what's the What's the most times you've come in one day, we man, for the audience? Seven. Seven. Nice. It's pretty good. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't count, but I wouldn't be surprised if I if I got seven. I was on a yeah. chair when I was twelve. When I was 12, I, I figured it out, and I was I was I meant business. I'm always interested in that because like highly successful people are like highly sex driven, so it's like I'm always curious about that. And and when I was when, like I had a buddy who, who did 11 one time when we were kids, and then we like up. looked it up, and uh, 
we found out that like the more you do, like the higher the number, the crazier you are. Oh. So, yep. <laughs> Crazy is not necessarily a bad thing. No, it's not. It's not at all. Hey, so it's just a term. <laughs> so, so, so what are we promoting? I think the people who are still listening at this point, deep in a podcast are, and by the way, thank you to all of you people who are still listening. They're like the diehards, man. These are the people who are, these are the people who are like, yo, they don't want to miss a thing. Whether they're like Steve O's my guy, we man's my guy, you know, like they're, they're on our team. They support and, uh, and we love them. And what is it that we want to uh, promote like for you? I don't have nothing to promote. I dropped all my skate sponsors. You know, I just, you know, I li- I promote I promote things now that I love. Uh-huh. Go eat at Chronic Tacos. Chronic go- Tacos. <clears throat> Order yeah. to go. Order it to go. Yeah. Follow Wee Man on Instagram. Actually. Follow me. Whether you're listening on audio or on YouTube and watching it, take a screenshot of your phone or you can take a photo of your computer and tag Wee Man in it and tell him how much you fucking loved the podcast <laughs> and confirm confirm that you're following Wee Man on Instagram. And tell him to add some hot sauce for your butthole to Chronic Talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, Hell yeah. When, and, and so, like, I know that you're big into the military, but what... Um, kind of uh like causes charity kind of stuff like uh, are you particularly passionate about uh i'm passionate about like for chronic we do no kid hungry so yeah. it's all the kids yeah we donate to that so it's like food banks and different things dude. for kids that yeah especially like in now times and stuff right now dude right now dude the food people are literally like thousands of cars like if they can't even make it a line it's got to be a yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. So fucking, I, I want to figure out a way to to help get like uh, get behind some food bank stuff. That's the best one, exactly for the kids. Yeah, because so, oh, it's not th- you know it's it's not their fault that you know the economy's like this and all that and stuff. Sure, right. Yep, but <clears throat> well, I don't know how long we've been going. But, this is uh, uh, fifty nine minutes and thirteen seconds. That uh, is like gold. I think that's probably a good length, man. I don't know. Yeah. I want to sure. say to you, thank you for, uh, t- thank you for so, so much, dude. Like, um, uh, for being there for when I, when I finished the skateboard, like, uh, yes. the, the wall ride for, uh, just being a bro. Like when, when we had some, some meetings, uh, you know, prior, prior to this big, big yeah. thing we've been doing. Yep. Right, and dude, like it, your your support, like really meant a lot. Like, uh, you know, when when we met up for being there when I engaged to my when I uh, proposed to my girl, like thank yeah. you for that. Like, like it's it's really crazy, man. Like, like just about twenty years we've been bros, and uh, yeah, you know, I like to think that we've been there for each other, and and you know, I'm really grateful for you, brother. Thank you, bud. I'm really grateful you for you too, and I think sometimes when we we don't think outside of the work box. And we realize even we, we would do things outside of it. We kind of thought of it as work. I think we forget that how much we've been bros and been doing throughout these years. Yeah, so, for sure. Thanks for, thanks for being my bro too, bud. Yeah, dude. And um, we were also talking before we started this whole thing that you're interested in uh, firing up like a, a, a podcast of your own, which I'm totally supportive of. And uh, I, I can, you know, every everything that I'm learning from doing this, I can easily transfer over to you. And uh, yeah, dude, it, it, I think it's fun, dude. I think it's a killer and then deal. The things I'm learning too, I'm gonna transfer over to you too, yeah. <laughs> so that I, love it. I know when when we're all when we're getting a little older and stuff, you'll have this <laughs> nest egg set up that you'll be like, I can do whatever the fuck I want. I mean, we'll see what happens, man. Like, uh, we'll start. With, we'll start with the hot sauce, and then we'll work our way into stock tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, man. But dude, thank you so much for this. Uh, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I'm sure everybody else did too. And I just, I just love the fucking shit out of you, brother. So, thank man. You, brother. I love All you right, too. dude. Take care, we man. Woo. Cheers. Take care. Woo. 
Yep, another incredible podcast in the can. And uh, like I said during the podcast, please screenshot that shit, tag Wee Man and myself on Instagram. And I love that we're doing that every week. <laughs> Sorry, I'm working out. Uh, it's like you guys are the street team. Just promoting it to everybody to listen to the podcast, check it out on YouTube. Super grateful for that. And I mean, shit, I don't know what else to say. It's a lot of fun. I think we are going to actually go every other week, though, now. Uh, but every week something's going up. We'll see what it is, and I love you guys. Thanks. Ugh. <sighs>